In this lesson, we'll explore multi-axis flow for three versus five axes. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create multi-axis flow toolpaths for three and five axes, modify the tool used to better suit geometry, and use simulate to validate changes. For this next lesson, let's get started by uploading the supplied file, three axis flow example. We're going to take a look at this example and explore the multi-axis flow toolpath one more time by comparing a three axis and a five axis toolpath on the same part. We're going to navigate to the manufacturer workspace and create a new cam setup. We're going to use the default stock in this case, but we do want to change the model orientation. We want to make sure that we set the Z axis relative to our Y axis, and we'll leave it at the center of our part and say OK. We're going to go into multi-axis flow, and we want to select a ball and mill. We're going to go into all, and filter by type and turn on our ball and mill. And notice in here that we're going to be using the tool number 108, eighth inch ball and long, and then we're going to say OK. For the geometry, we're going to select the top face, the fillet, and the surrounding geometry. And then we're simply going to say OK and allow it to create the toolpath. I also want to make sure that I go back in and I'm going to change my units to inch and then take a look at the toolpath that's created. Remember, by default, it's going to have one pass. And one thing I always like to do, especially when working with multi axis toolpaths, is go in and create a toolpath with the default settings first, so that way I know it can be created, and then I can go back and manipulate the parameters. From a top view, we're going to note that the fillet direction is going to be going the wrong way. We want to make sure that our UV curve is going in a direction that makes sense for the fillet. The top face actually doesn't really need to be machined with this toolpath, so we can go ahead and deselect it and focus our attention just on these two. Then for the number of passes, this is where it gets a little tricky when we're doing a single toolpath with multiple face selections. The number of step overs is going to be the same for both selections. So for example, if we set this to 15 and we say OK, we're going to get 15 passes on the fillet and then 15 passes on the larger face selection. So when we're using a toolpath like this, we need to be sure that the selection process makes sense. We might want to create two different toolpaths, one specifically for the secondary surface and one for the primary. So in geometry, for example, I'm going to deselect the fillet. And then for passes, in this case, I'm going to add more passes. Then I'll go back and I'll modify the first toolpath. And again, for geometry, I'll deselect the larger surface and allow it to recalculate that. So this way, if I take a look at the results and simulate them, I'm going to go ahead and just play through and allow it to start machining away the geometry. Keep in mind that we haven't done anything like a facing operation or 3D adaptive clearing, but now we can get a good idea as to what's going on with each of these toolpaths. You can see that the larger surface likely will need a larger ball and mill or potentially a lot more passes, while the smaller fillet is probably an okay result based on the tool that we're using and the number of step overs. So when we're doing something like this with the flow toolpath, we need to keep these options in mind, the selection of faces, the number of step overs, and the size of the tool. But we can also take care of this by doing a multi-axis flow toolpath using the five axis option or multi-axis option. For geometry, I'm going to take a look just at the large surface. For passes, I'm going to set this again to something larger like 55 and say OK and allow it to calculate that. Keep in mind that the UV direction is also important here. By having the UV direction oriented the way it was, what we're doing is we're working around the geometry of the part, but we could also have it go up and down. Also note the direction the tool is coming from, so let's go ahead and simulate this one. If I'm only selecting this individual toolpath, it won't simulate the material that's been removed by the first two. So we can get a good idea as to what it's going to look like just based on this one. 
So you can see as it's working its way around, using the same number of step overs and the same tool, the resolution that we're seeing on the part is different because the tool is being kept in a different orientation. So using multi-axis in order to finish this geometry can be helpful. However, in this case, our tool still needs to be a little bit larger. Let's take a look at that flow direction and see how that will affect things. If we change this to a long V and say OK, it's going to recalculate it moving up and down the part. Notice that 55 step overs aren't nearly enough in this case. So if we simulate this and simply just jump to the end, you can see that the end result by using 55 step overs in this orientation is not going to be anything close to what we need for a final part. So the orientation in this case is going to be a big factor in the surface quality of the part. So we're going to go back to our U orientation. We're going to allow it to cut both ways and we're using multi-axis and we can say OK and just have it calculate that one more time. The last thing that would really help in this case is again to change the tool that we're using. In this case I've got an eighth inch ball and mill but if I go back and I filter by ball and mills and look at something a little bit larger, let's say a 3 8 long. This will also change the way that final part looks because the larger radius ball and mill with the same amount of step overs is going to give us a different quality finish. We've already talked about this earlier on in our course about how to help plan for the best possible step over based on your geometry and your tools. Now that the toolpath is calculated, let's simulate this and take a look at the material removal. Because we're now using that larger ball end mill and again using the same number of step overs, the cusps that are created based on this toolpath are going to be much smaller. So you can see we get a smoother result in the preview on the screen, which tells me that it's much better in this case to use a larger diameter tool. That way we can get a smoother finish on our final part. So as we start to explore these multi-axis toolpaths, note that multi-axis flow can be used in a three-axis or multi-axis style toolpath. Multi-axis contour and swarf, however, are going to be a multi-axis only type toolpath. From here, let's go ahead and save this file before we move on.